Do the watchtowers require maintenance and conservation? Yeah, they really do, heavy duty. Uh, unfortunately, the city of Los Angeles was given the Watts Towers in 1975. They didn't bother to do anything with them until about 1981 or so. The state did some work on them and spent a million three on them. And I was their consultant when they were working, the state was working on the Watts Towers. And they didn't know what to do either. Understanding what to do with a handmade Watts Towers thing is not easy. You know, it's, it's redundant, meaning it's got way too many legs, it doesn't need them. It only needs three legs, it's got 16. Right. And you can't calculate how much load there is because redundancy makes you can't calculate it. So it's really hard to take care of the Watts Towers. Right. But the reason that they can't pay for them is they're doing it wrong. They're doing it all wrong. And what, why are, why are they doing, how are they doing it incorrectly? All right, let me just say this, that I worked as a consultant to the Cultural Affairs Department from 1970-something to, to year 2000, almost 30 years it was. And, uh, and I was out there working on taking care of them. I finished up a major part of the job in the year 2000. And we did an inspe a detailed inspection and that was the last good detailed inspection that they ever did because they don't bother doing that anymore. Wow. And in the inspection, we found that there were a couple of hundred cracks that had formed in the members. They have cement cover. And when the member is going, the steel reinforcement either swells up because it's hot or shrinks down when it's cold, or earthquake comes along, which is really trouble. And so when the cover started cracking, we used to keep track of those failures, count them, identify where they were on a series of a couple hundred photographs we had in detail. And they don't do that anymore. But we did, and so we knew what was happening with the towers. And uh, in, in year 2000, I started to tell you, we had an inspection. We right. found there were a couple hundred cracks. I was amazed. I didn't think there would be any cracks. What I didn't think about at the time, or what I didn't think hard enough about, was that at night when it gets cold, the steel shrinks more than the mortar does. Cement mortar doesn't shrink as much as steel. And when the daytime, when it gets hot, the steel grew more than the mortar because it doesn't bother. And so what happened was overnight, stresses build up in it. And, and the city just published a piece of paper supposedly telling all the problems that we had with the Watts Towers. They didn't even mention the thermal problem, the heat, the heat at night, and the cold, cold at night and the heat in the day. They didn't even mention that problem. Wow. So that's another reason that I'm really down on the city, because they have people who don't think and they don't listen, because I told them about that. Not once or twice, but I even ran a test to prove that. Wow. In 1980 something, 86, I had a lab come out and do some tests and put thermocouples on the steel and the mortar and strain gauges to measure what was happening. And, and I left the report with them. The company was called ANCO, A N C O. I remember that, and that was from 40 years ago. Anyway, they did this test, and the test proved that the heat and the cold caused stresses in the members to go up to about five or 6,000 pounds per square inch, wow. which is enough to crack the mortar. Well, they never bothered to check that back on that, and they published a big paper, which I just read today, that they claim this is all the, you want to know about the Watts Towers, and they left that out. Wow. Nothing about thermal. <laughs> and if the city doesn't regularly maintain watchtowers, what will eventually happen? <laughs> they won't be there. I mean, when, as soon as the, the cracks start to build in, in the cement mortar, then the members start to lose the reinforcement and they'll start to fall down. When I first saw the watchtowers in 1959, there were about 100 or 200, 200 feet of cracks, big cracks in the members of the Watts Towers. 
and and there were pieces that were had fallen to the ground, big pieces, you know, three feet long and one foot long, full of ornamentation that were lying on the patio floor. And that's what happened, and that's what will happen again if they leave them alone, don't do anything with them. The only thing the city can do is step aside and let the LA County Museum of Art Conservation Center take over or some other qualified laboratory because the city has no people that really know what to do with the Watts Towers. Even though they've got engineers on their staff who work on very fancy stuff, but they don't know about non-fancy stuff. See, the Watts Towers were made by a, an illiterate Italian immigrant who was a cement finisher. And they don't really think much of the Watts Towers down at City Hall, I don't think. And I've got that opinion because I worked with them for 14 years here, and, and, and I just don't think they care about the Watts Towers. They don't think they're worth anything, even though they're now a National Historic Landmark. And do you think that um, something like a lawsuit might make the city start paying more attention? It did last time. It did. See, in, in 1985, the Center for Law and the Public Interest drew up a lawsuit against the city for what they did before this, you know, in the, in the 50s and 60s, and 70s. What, and what came about as a result of that lawsuit? The city paid about almost two and a half million dollars and they all went to the Watts Towers. And it, the group that sued them was a nonprofit group that I belonged to at one time called the, uh, I don't remember right now, but it's the Committee for Simon Rodia's Towers and Watts. And uh, I belonged to that for some time. I did that load test for that group in 1959. <laughs> and as, as a community and as a concerned citizen, what can I do to help encourage the city to save the Watts Towers? Or what can I do as an, as an individual to help make sure that the Watts Towers are there for generations to come? Well, I believe that you'd have to start a movement to get the state, which owns the towers, to turn the towers over to, like, L.A. County Museum of Art, which has a conservation group that I worked for. I worked for them as a consultant on occasion, and they've got wonderful people there. The city has nobody like that. Nobody, not even one. And are there qualified... So you have to take the towers away from the city to save them. So would you say that it's fair to say that the city has not done what it needs to do to make sure that Watts Towers can be enjoyed by Los Angelinos and people from all over for generations to come? I would say that, yeah. That they hadn't done what they should have done. See, now they've owned the Watts Towers or had them in their back pocket since 1975. 1975, how many years ago is that? 25 and more, right? Yeah, 35 years ago. I, I went through their archive, they call it. The archive is the record of all the tests that have ever been done on the Watts Towers by the city. And the next people who get the Watts Towers, to, I hope soon, will have to look at that record to see what's happened to them. Well, they're going to find out that the records are screwed up worse than you can believe. They're, they're, there's, I read them. I, got, I have copies of them. You come reading along, and all of a sudden, there's a big section that says, to be supplied later by engineering. Now, I'm looking at a report that was written in the year 2000. Wow. So that was nine years before, and they still haven't got anything in the record to find out what did engineering find when they examined the Watts Towers after this test. I mean, it's just awful. They're just, it's worse than they had. <laughs> I don't know. It's a pits.